Okay, so today we're going to be finishing off um, partial fractions. Um, we're going to be looking at um, doing integration on partial fractions where uh, the original fraction we have might be such that we need to do algebraic division. So we haven't had to do that last time. So I think it's worth having just a refresher on our algebraic division strategy. Um, and I've given you an example here of one to try. So can you divide that top by that bottom? Can you evaluate this, um, this algebraic expression, this uh, algebraic fra uh, fraction? And can we rewrite it as an expression plus some remainder at the end? Um, so give it a go, do a bit of algebraic division, see if you can get that answer. Okay, and then let's see if we can uh, just follow along. So feel free to skip ahead to the answer if you uh, feel like you've successfully done it. Um, we're going to have x to the 5 plus x to the 4 plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared minus x plus 1. And I'm going to divide that all by x squared plus 0x minus 1. Okay, so up here I'm going to have an x cubed, so that gives me a matching x to the 5 plus uh, 0 minus x cubed. Let's take that away. I'm left with x to the 4 uh, plus x cubed. So I'm going to put an x squared here, so that matches up to give me x to the 4 plus uh, plus zero. Oh, I should have brought down that zero there as well. Uh, and then x squared times x squared plus zero x minus one is x to the four plus zero minus x squared. Take that away. And what are we left with? I've got x cubed and x squared. Bring down the minus x. Uh, so then let's add an x. Multiply that by x squared plus 0x minus 1, I get x cubed plus uh, 0 minus x. Take that away. And what do we get? 0 uh, x squared and minus x minus minus x, that's 0 and a 1. So then finally, Uh, I'm going to do a plus 1 here. That's going to give me x squared uh, plus 0x uh, minus 1. Take those away. What am I left with? 1 minus minus 1. I've got 2. So my remainder is this. 2 all over x squared minus 1. So my final answer is as follows. Oh, and then, sorry, that should be a plus there. Yeah, as it was here. Cool, so that's it. Uh, we've got the algebraic division done. So you can probably imagine now what the point of this is. Um, if you've been asked to integrate this sort of nasty looking function, that would have been the same as asking you to integrate this. You know how to integrate that. And this we can now integrate as well. From what we've done in part one, uh, we would convert that into partial fractions. Uh, in this case, uh, 2 over x squared minus 1 is the same as, uh, by a difference of two squares, x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we could convert this into partial fractions, two separate fractions, and integrate those, and then we'd be done. Okay, so that's mainly what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, Maybe not all the questions will be of that form, but uh, certainly more than last time. Um, since we're on the topic, this might be obvious to some of us, but I thought I'd just uh, talk about the order of a polynomial a little bit, because I feel like uh, sometimes we, we tend to just talk about the order of a polynomial, like we're all sure what it means, but uh, 
there's a few edge cases I thought I'd just quickly discuss. Um, so the order of a polynomial, if we remember, is just this concept that uh, we tend to list them, you know, in terms of their powers, highest to lowest. So this one um, has an order three, simply because uh, three is the highest power that occurs um, on any term, on any variable in the polynomial. Um, so I just thought I'd just ask a few sort of side questions, which maybe you might have thought about before. Uh, what if it was a, a fractional power? So what if I had something like this? Uh, what is the order? Well, in this case, uh, the answer is basically invalid question. This is not a polynomial. Technically not, right? Um, so it, it looks a bit like a polynomial, but it technically isn't because by definition, a polynomial must have integer powers. Okay. Uh, what if uh, I had uh, something like this? What do we think the order of this is? And it's not a valid polynomial. Okay, so again, um, this one we wouldn't assign an order. And the reason here uh, is because negative powers are not acceptable either. So no fractional powers, no negative powers. Um, so I guess I'm partly just making you aware of this because um, the, the types of problems we're going to be looking at will hopefully only be of that type, positive integers. And if they're not, then there might be something else going on before you can start doing polynomial division and that sort of thing. Uh, finally, if I just have this, what is its order? Um, so this is, this is order one. If it's just the number five, this is order zero. And the zero polynomial, which is literally just the number zero, this is order undefined. So to be clear, all of this, you probably could have done without it in this session, but I thought I'd just bring it up because I'm gonna be talking about orders of polynomials in a moment. And I thought we just wanted to remember what exactly it is. So a polynomial can only have um, positive integer powers, the exception being zero. So I should say um, zero or above integer powers, uh, no negatives, no fractions. And you take the highest one, that is the order of your polynomial. And if you were ever curious and were asking questions like these before about order, then here are your answers. Okay, uh, so we're on to our first example, and um, I just want us to note the order of the polynomials on the top and the bottom. So this one at the top is order two. This one at the bottom is uh, order two as well. And uh, this we should already know, but I'm just gonna make a note, and this was why I talked about order so much. Um, if the order of top, I'm gonna just call the top and bottom, I could be, more technical and say numerator denominator, but this is easier to remember. Uh, if the order of the top is uh, greater than or equal to the order of bottom, um, then use polynomial division. Okay. Uh, if the top is smaller, you can't use polynomial division. You jump straight to using partial fractions. So this is just an extra step when the orders are not in our favor. So here they're equal, which means we do have to do polynomial division. So let's do that. Um, and in this case, ah, this one's uh, missing a zero. Let's put that in there. 9x squared plus 0x. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to have 1 here um, and uh, multiply through. Take that away. Uh, what do I end up with? 
uh, minus 3x uh, plus 6. So therefore, this integral is the same as uh, 1 plus uh, minus 3x plus 6, or 6 minus 3x, uh, divided by 9x squared minus 4. Okay. Right. Uh, so we've done our polynomial division. And now next, we're going to have to do our partial fractions step. Um, so let's just clear a bit of space. So that, that denominator at the bottom is uh, 9x squared minus 4. That should look uh, to you to just be a difference of two squares, right? So I think we're just going to work on that for a moment. Um, this thing, 6 minus 3x all over, is difference of three squares, or two squares, three squares would be impressive. Difference of three squares gives me this. Uh, so I can write it in this form somehow, right, via partial fractions. Um, I think I think I'm going to skip showing the actual working for this part because partial fractions we've done so many times now. But uh, do do it yourself if you think you're not sure, uh, if you think you still need the practice. But at this stage, I'm just going to look at the answer. So um, it turns out in this case, a will end up being one, and b will end up being uh, minus two. So uh, we are now evaluating the following integral. So we've reduced it further. Polynomial division was step one. Partial fractions was step two. Um, so it's now one plus one all over three x minus two, uh, minus two all over three x plus two. Okay. So now we can start using uh, our step three, our inverse chain rule. Um, or whatever integral methods we can come up with. So that one is going to become an x. That's easy enough. Um, what about this? So the derivative of the bottom is three. At the top, I've got a one. So that means I just multiply by three to make up for it. Um, or one third, sorry, to make up for it. And we have a third ln 3x minus two. Uh, and then in this case, uh, the derivative of the bottom is 3, the top is 2, so I am going to compensate by multiplying by 2 thirds, uh, and it's a minus in this case. Okay, there we go. Um, so now we just combine uh, our, our logs. Uh, what's the best way to do this? So I would, uh, I'm going to take the third out of everything. So let's put a big bracket around here. And now this third is going to go away. So that becomes a two. Um, and then that two is going to become a power. Like so. Okay, and now let's go to a new line. So then we get x plus a third. And now I'm going to use log rules to combine uh, the difference of two logs. So I'll get 3x minus 2 all over uh, 3x plus 2 squared. And a plus c. Oh, and I should, uh, to be precise, this should still be mod. Uh, because I had a mod, a mod here, so I can't, I can't get rid of that, unfortunately. Uh, and that's it. That's the integral. Uh, it looks crazy, but that's the integral of this particular uh, polynomial here. Cool. So to recap, step one, uh, polynomial division, or algebraic division. Step two, partial fractions. Step three, reverse chain rule on the separate parts. So then before I give you some questions to try, uh, I just wanted to give you one little trick, um, which some of you may know about already, in fact. Um, I'm just going to go back to that question we just had. So it was 
x squared uh, minus 3x plus 2. So, you know, this isn't a life-changing trick, but it's a uh, it's good to know about, I think. If you ever have um, something like this, where the top and the bottom are the same order, because remember, if if uh, if they're different orders, if the top is bigger, you're going to have to do a whole chain of, of division. But if they're the same, exactly the same, then you can actually uh, use a little shortcut um, sometimes. Uh, I don't think there's a name for the rule for this. But what I do is this. If I notice the top and bottom are largely similar, I force the top to look more like the bottom. So I'm using non-technical language here because uh, this, this is not really a real rule. It's more of a, something you can spot sometimes by inspection. So on the bottom I have 9x squared minus 4. So I'm just going to make the top uh, have a 9x squared minus 4 as well. But then I'm going to compensate for that by just adding the 4 back in again to undo what I've just done there. And then I still have the minus 3x plus 2. So what I've written here on the right hand side is completely valid, right? Because all I've done is I've taken the top and done minus 4 plus 4, which effectively changes nothing. But now, because I forced that top part to look like this bottom bit, I can just split this into um, 1. Um, oh, let's not rush. Let's, let's do it fully, I suppose. Uh, 9x squared minus 4 all over 9x squared minus 4, uh, plus uh, 4 minus 3x plus 2, all over 9x squared minus 4. And now I get, on the left-hand side, I get 1, and on the right-hand side, I get 6 minus 3x. And that's it. That's the same answer we had before. So um, it's, a, it's a little trick you can use sometimes. It won't, it will rarely be the case that you can do this. Most of the time you'll just have to use polynomial division, but you might find sometimes it saves you some time. Cool. All right, let's look at some questions. So uh, just three questions, two on this slide, one on the next. Um, I find anything with partial fractions does take a bit of a long time to do. So um, I think three questions should be enough uh, for you to try. Um, they reach about 10 marks anyway, so that is just under 10 minutes of work for each. Um, that top one here, see if you can do the trick I mentioned uh, for the polynomial division, um, if you want to, it's up to you. Uh, and then for number six, I'm afraid you probably won't be able to use it. You'll just have to... Uh, oh, actually, in fact, for number six, uh, you don't need to do algebraic division, do you? Because the top has an order of two and the bottom has an order of three. Cool. All right. So I'll let you get on with those. Um, you can pause the video now. And then finally, uh, last time to practice. Uh, this is the last question we'll do on partial fractions. Uh, we'll move on next session. So give this one a go. You can pause the video now. <laughs> 